Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns, or figs of thistles? Even so every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree brings forth evil fruit. Matthew 7 verse 15 to 17 We're home. Today's service was very powerful. Babes, do you like our new church? Powerful indeed. To be honest, I don't like our new church. Since we just moved into this area, don't you think we should take time and look for a good church? Why? This church is nice and beautiful. There is air conditioning, the building is nice and it's very close to the house. The pastor is also powerful. The building or structure of the church isn't what is important. My spirit doesn't just like that pastor or prophet. Remember 1 John 4 verse 1 to 2 says that we should believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they're of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. I don't know how to explain it, my spirit doesn't just flow with that man of God. So tell me why you don't like the pastor? I think the church is built around him rather than Christ. This is the second Sunday, we've worshipped there, and I've not heard him preach the word of God and explain what the Bible means and how to apply it to our lives. I know each pastor is called differently, but it must be based on the word of God. He spends so much time talking about himself than God and the congregation are now looking like his followers instead of Christ. People are certainly called to love their pastor, encourage and pray for them, but ultimately they should follow Jesus and the word, not the messenger. I get you. I also felt this way at first, but I think preaching the word is not his calling that's why his focus is on healing deliverance and performing miracles. The Bible says in Psalms 119 verse 105 that thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Hebrews 4 verse 12, the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul, and spirit and of joints and marrow, and is the discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. If we don't know the word of God, how will we be able to withstand the wiles of the devil? You see, miracle is good but I'll love to attend a church that will help me know the word of God and how to apply it to my life and also help my prayer life. No problem but since you're not always around, let's just continue to worship there since it's not far. No problem. I have given you power to perform miracles. All you have to do is to keep on sleeping with your church members and their destiny will be transferred to you. Ha 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 ha. Your church will be the talk of the town, people will come to your church from all corners of the earth. I will use you to do great and mighty things. You will be rich. You will drive any type of luxurious car you want and people will build houses for you. As from today, you'll never lack. Your members will respect you and you will have branches worldwide. Raise up your hands, let me put fire in your hands. Ha 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 ha. As from today, whoever you touch will receive fire. Your hands will heal the sick and your spiritual eyes are opened as from today. Yes, my lord. I'll always bring the tithe for you as a pledge. I receive the fire to perform miracles. Go. It is settled. Thank you, my lord. Hello, Mrs. Grace. How is the family? This is Bishop Prophet Jeremiah. I called to welcome you to church. Hope you were blessed during the service. I'll be having a counseling session with all first-timers tomorrow, you're invited. Yes, Daddy. I'll be there. Good afternoon, Pastor. Afternoon. Welcome to church. Thank you, sir. Are you married? Because I'm seeing something in the realm of the spirit. Yes, sir. Yes. God is telling me that you're married and there's something I'm seeing about your husband. You bank with First Bank and your account number is 00376-8914. Yes, Pastor. That's right. You're correct. Where is your husband right now? He's not around. He traveled out for work. Yes, Lord. That's exactly what God is telling me. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Madam, you have to fast and pray for your husband. I see him with another woman as he traveled. Pray that no strange woman will scatter your home. It will not happen in Jesus' name. Amen. That evil woman will try to scatter your marriage, but it will not work. You will fast for seven days in church and I'll break it for you. For this prayers to work, make sure you don't tell your husband about this prophecy and the fasting. After fasting, you will sow a seed and there's another thing that I'll do for you. 
Go, it is settled. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. I'll start the fasting very soon. Pastor, I will also like you to pray for me to be fruitful. I want God to bless us with children. That's right. I also saw that but I felt it wasn't important yet. How many children do you want to have? Three is enough. That's good. Come with three eggs on the last day of the fast. There's an assignment I'll do for you and after that you'll be pregnant. Thank you, sir. I'm so happy and blessed. It is well with you. Your blessed daughter of Zion. Hello, babes. How are you and how was your day? Fine. We thank God and yours. Mine was also fine, but I miss you so much. That's a lie. I know you are not missing me. After all, you have another woman that you are enjoying life with. What do you mean by that? Did you see me with another woman? Why are you suspecting me? You think I don't know that you have been cheating on me? Please, stop pretending like I'm lying and just do your thing with your chest. That's a lie. I'm not cheating on you. I don't know who is deceiving you or did your friends tell you that all men cheat? Look, I don't have strength to argue with you but I just want you to know that I know what you're doing over there. Bye. She ended the call. What's going on with her or is she trying to pull my legs? Women and their issues. Father, I thank you for the privilege of standing here before you today. Thank you for the breath of life. Thank you for my family. Be thou exalted in Jesus' name. O oh God, as I seek your face, give me an experience that will affect my life daily for good in Jesus' name. Let every hand assigned to steal my joy, wither and dry up now. Psalm 121 verse 1 says that I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. Father, you are my helper therefore I depend on you to fight my battles. Lord, preserve and protect my family from every strange woman. Nobody will take my place and I shall never labor in vain. The Lord that surprised Hannah with a child, please do it for me. Remember me O Lord in Jesus name, Amen. Good evening daddy, I'm done with the fast for today. That's right, my daughter. May the Lord answer your prayers. Amen. I hope you didn't tell anyone that you're fasting in church. No, I did not. I didn't even inform my husband. That's good. You must be hungry, let's go to a restaurant and eat. Don't worry dad. I believe your wife will be waiting for you at home. Are you saying no to your spiritual father? I don't like that. Forgive me dad, I'll join you. You can order for whatever you want to eat. We are the only ones here, so eat as much as you like. Yes dad, thank you so much. You're the best spiritual father anyone can ask for. Waiter. This man of God is always coming here with different women. I hope the wife will catch him one day. Anyways, I shouldn't be judging, because they might actually be his church members that he's trying to care for. Hi Bella, please have you heard from your sister? I have been trying to call her but she's not picking. Can you help me to check on her and let me know? Okay, I'll get back to you soon. Please try. I've not spoken to her for over three days now because she is not picking my calls. I'm so worried, I hope all is well with her. Congratulations to you. You've completed your fasting and prayer. Now that you're through, you will have to sow a quality seed to God. I've also prayed to God concerning your situation and there's something you must do if you want to give birth to a child. If you don't do it, you'll remain barren. And what's that thing that I must do? Meet me at my office and I'll explain it to you. Madam, do you want to get pregnant immediately, and by this time next year, you'll give birth to a bouncing baby boy? Yes, Pastor. I want it to happen immediately. Are you ready to do what I want you to do? This is what my Heavenly Father is telling me. I hear him clearly. Yes, Daddy. I'm ready to do anything. Good. The secret is for you to sleep with me. If you sleep with me, you will get pregnant immediately and nobody will know. Your husband won't know and you will be pregnant and give birth in nine months' time. That's wrong. I can't do that. If I do it, that means I'm cheating on my husband. Keep deceiving yourself. Do you know what your husband is doing over there? 
If you don't want a strange woman to take over your home, you better do it once, get pregnant and preserve your marriage. No pastor. My husband said he's not cheating and I believe him. I can't sleep with you. I respect you and the anointing of God over your life and you're also married. How will I face mummy after doing this? I'm so sorry, I can't. You can go home and think about it. If you're ready to have a child, you let me know. I've told you that it will be a secret between us. No pastor. I better go home now. If you refuse me, just know that you will be barren all your life. I don't understand this my daddy and the Lord. How can he ask me to sleep with him when we are both married? That's a sin. Even though I'll really like to have a child, I will not do anything that is not right before God. It looks like he's been planning this all along. No wonder he asked me not to tell my husband about the fasting and prayer. I think my husband was right about him. Welcome home. Thank you. Where have you been and why are you not picking your calls? I've been so worried. I am so so sorry. I was in church for seven days and my phone has been off because the pastor told me not to tell anyone that I was fasting. But I am not just anyone. I'm your husband. You should have told me knowing that I'll be worried especially as I wasn't around. Why must you hide it from me? Babes, it's a long story. That man of God told me to fast and pray that you were with a strange woman only to try to sleep with me on the last day of the fast. What? Anyways, I'm not surprised. It takes discernment to see beneath the mask of an imposter. The Bible says that by their fruit, you shall know them. I called it but you said you like his church. He said if I want to have a child then I'll have to do it with him. Anyways, I turned him down. He lied to you that I was cheating to prepare your mind. 1 Peter 2 verse 1 to 22 Samaris is everything you need to know about false prophets. All we need to do is to pray for the spirit of discernment. We can cultivate discernment by studying God's word and abiding in its truth. Once you know the word of God, you cannot be easily deceived. Does what this man slash woman is preaching or doing match with the word of God? Is their lifestyle biblical? Does their teaching lead people to Christ? They can perform miracles, signs and wonders but do they back it up with the word of God and prayers? If it is only evil predictions or prophecies that is coming to pass in their members' life then something is wrong. In your own case, he was using his position of leadership to take advantage of you. The good thing is that you didn't fall to his schemes. That's right. I am so sorry for not listening to you. I'll be careful next time I want to choose a church. Hello friends, please remember to subscribe to this channel. In Matthew 24 verse 3 to 8 towards the end of Jesus Christ's earthly ministry, his disciples came to him with several questions concerning the future and the end of the world, and he reminded them that they should take heed that no man deceive them. For many shall come in my name, saying I am Christ and shall deceive many. As children of God, it is our duty to be watchmen in the tower today. Be careful of where you choose as your church, for there are many false prophets and teachers arising. Be careful not to fall victim to their deception. In Matthew 7 verse 15, the Bible says that we should be beware of false prophets, which comes to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. They infiltrate the church and lead people astray. Do not fall for their schemes. They make predictions that may not come true, they may perform signs and wonders, they may even claim to be Christ, they may have unbiblical lifestyle and their teachings may lead people away from Christ. Matthew 7 verse 22 says that many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name, have cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? Verse 23 says and then will I profess unto them, I never knew you, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Unless that individual has a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, all their deeds and religious fervor will be meaningless. In a world of deception, make up your mind to pursue truth and spread the good news of Jesus Christ. May God help us and give us the spirit of discernment in Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you for watching, God bless you.